Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Startup Boston podcast, where I interview entrepreneurs, investors, and influencers in the Boston startup community to uncover actionable advice and stories from their experiences. In this episode, I interview Vinayak Renat. Vinayak started his career at Kayak as a software engineer and ended up running the Kayak mobile engineering team as well as technical recruiting. At the time, Kayak didn't have an in-house recruiting team. Instead, the recruiting was being done by the engineering managers like himself. It was during this time, running the recruiting process at Kayak, that Vinayak realized this was something he really enjoyed. When he left Kayak, he knew the next problem he needed to solve was hiring, and thus Drafted was born. Drafted, whose goal is to make recruiting fast, fun, and rewarding for all involved, uses mutual connections to connect potential candidates with hiring managers through referrals. As always, everything mentioned in this episode can be found in the show notes at StartupBostonPodcast.com. Enjoy the episode. Vinayak, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Uh, thanks. It's awesome to be here. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Thank you. Um, I'm excited to learn more about yourself and Drafted and how you've built Drafted. Uh, but first, can you give us a little background about yourself? Sure. Uh, so I actually came to Boston about 10 years ago, and I came here to go to MIT, and I got my bachelor's and my master's in computer science there. Uh, while I was at MIT, uh, one of the research areas that I focused on was actually smart energy grids and what is today known as the Internet of Things. So one of the cool things that we did there was uh, we imagined what would happen if every single electrical device on the grid had some smarts and how they could cooperate together to reduce energy usage and be more optimal in terms of saving people money on their electricity bills. Uh, after MIT, uh, I joined Kayak.com, uh, which is a Paul English's company. Uh, and uh, I was there from 2010 to about 2014. I started there as a software engineer um, doing web development on the Kayak Hotels product. Um, under uh, under the VP of technology, whose name is Jim Giza, uh, who's a lovely man. And uh, I owe him a lot for giving my first job out of college. And uh, over the course of four years, uh, I've, uh, I kind of moved around a bunch of teams at Kayak. I worked on some mobile stuff. I worked on some of the back-end algorithms. Um, I actually have a patent uh, at Kayak that's related to flight pricing and caching, uh, which was a really fun project. And at the end of it, I ended up running um, the Kayak mobile engineering team. And that was kind of the really early days of the App Store. And, you know, we grew from maybe 5 million downloads to 30 million downloads while I was there, give or take. And the other thing that I did at Kayak was I actually ran most of technical recruiting um, by the end of my time there. And Kayak didn't really have any HR or in-house recruiting team. Uh, most of the recruiting and all of the peripheral logistics and operations that go along with that was done by engineering managers like me. And <clears throat> so uh, that was a really great experience at Kayak. Uh, eventually, Kayak uh, went public and got acquired by Priceline. And uh, after that, I decided to start Drafted, which is the current company that I'm working on. Okay. So how did you go from Kayak to deciding to start Drafted? What what made you want to start, start Drafted as it is? Uh, that's a really good question. So uh, in, uh, in the moment, it seemed like... Uh, the reason was mostly that uh, I ran a lot of the recruiting process at Kayak, and you know I started Kayak's first internship program uh, and grew that from zero to twenty people. And you know I was the person that took Kayak to um, college career fairs. I was the guy that manned the career fair booth. I was also the person that scanned all the resumes. I was the person that worked with all of the headhunters. And so we probably had about twenty different contract agencies that worked with us. So you know they would send me fifty e- emails a week with resumes that I had to scan and filter through. But I was also the person who did all the first phone screens with any incoming candidate for the engineering team. I also scheduled all the interviews and wrangled all the different interviewers, um, gave the candidates feedback. Sometimes I even wrote offer letters uh, if uh, if the stuff wasn't happening fast enough uh, in in the back end of the organization. And so so really, I got to experience every single part of the recruiting process. And while doing that, you know, one of the things that I realized is that uh, I really liked doing it. And... I think that's really odd. I think most people, when they think about hiring the, or HR, the first thought in their mind is, ugh. <laughs> uh, but for me, uh, I always got really excited about it. And uh, I was one of the very few people in engineering who was also excited about hiring. And uh, so after leaving Kayak, I realized that no matter what I wanted to do next, the number one problem I was going to have to solve is hiring. So you only get to do 
you know, two or three really big projects in your life, right? And, uh, you know, assuming that each of them take five or 10 years uh, before you're kind of out of gas. And for each of those projects, the first problem that you always have to solve is who are you going to do it with? What team are you going to build it with? Because to do anything of consequence, you can't do it alone. You have to have a great team. And so instead of trying to solve the same hiring problem two or three times, I kind of just wanted to solve it once. And uh, that was kind of the inspiration behind why I wanted to build a hiring company. So what do you like about the hiring process? You know, you mentioned that that's something that you really enjoyed at Kayak. What was it about that? Uh, I think uh, I think there's parts of it that can be really thrilling. Uh, I think the the feeling of uh, the feeling of giving someone an offer to work with you, uh, I think, is actually really exciting. Uh, normally, because the person that you're talking to is an exciting person, and you're excited to work with them. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, yeah, I, I definitely get energized when I'm working with really great people. And so if I know that someone energizing and amplifying is going to join my team, I get amped about it immediately. Mm-hmm. So I would say that's probably the primary feeling that I'm kind of always chasing. Okay. What do you think that most companies get wrong when it comes to recruiting? Do you think it's the process in which they go about it? Uh, that's, uh, there's many answers to that. I would say the shortest one that I can think of is that most companies have evolved to have a recruiting process that really focuses, it, that really focuses on eliminating bad candidates instead of attracting good candidates. So... Uh, you know, for example, if a company is getting 100 resumes a week um, and, you know, they're only going to end up hiring one out of those 100, most processes at companies are built to get rid of the 99 as fast as possible, right? And what that does is that each of those 99 people get an experience that's negative. Uh, whereas what you should be doing is treating every single candidate as though they're your next hire, Right. So I think, I think in a nutshell, that's probably the spirit that most companies get wrong. And it's not intentional. It's mostly because uh, of the way that their workloads are structured, right? Yeah. If you have to go through 100 resumes, uh, you end up focusing on that even if, even if you try not to. How do you think that they can treat those other 99 people better than what they currently well, I, I think I think it's just uh, I think it's just attitude, and okay. that attitude bleeds into process, and it bleeds into every single interaction that you have with every single person, right? And uh, and and I can, I think this comes a little bit into culture. Uh, one of the things that I loved at Kayak was uh, was a really small thing where uh, whenever there was someone who came into the office to interview, uh, you know, let's say they're uh, they're sitting in the kitchen or they're sitting in the conference room waiting for their next interviewer, uh, people who are passing by would duck in and say hi. They would introduce themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, they would be very friendly, and they would be genuinely helpful. Uh, and I think a lot of people at Kayak uh, who came to interview there, even though they may not have gotten the job, they left feeling like, "Oh man, this is this is such a great set of people uh, because they actually treat me like a person and not like uh, you know and not like a cost center. They don't treat me like a resume." How how can companies go about building that great culture that you experience? Uh, I think uh, I think it has a lot of it has to be. Uh, starting at the top, where I think how uh, I think how managers work with the people around them really bleeds into this. So if everyone on your team uh, sees the manager doing this with a candidate that's coming in, then they will all feel inspired to do it as well. And uh, I think you know, and, and it's not just the managers. I think it just requires like a few people um, at the core to start doing it. And then, uh, and then it kind of makes sense for everyone else to start doing it too. Okay. Uh, so tell us more about Drafted. So Drafted is a mobile recruiting app uh, that is now uh, actually we're, we're starting to focus more and more on all kinds of, uh, all kinds of platforms for recruiting. Um, but at the core of it, our goal is to make hiring fast, fun, and rewarding for everyone involved. That includes the companies. It includes the candidates. It includes the employees of the company, it includes the interviewers, it includes their friends, it includes the candidates' friends, and it includes the entire community. And uh, the first app that we built, uh, which was last year, was very, very focused on a single thing, which is connecting a hiring manager and a candidate as fast as humanly possible through a mutual connection. Because fundamentally, we believe that introductions beat resumes, and because of that, we wanted to create an app that made it really, really easy to refer someone to a job. 
So many companies have their own, you know, version of bounties. How how can they benefit from using your app? Yeah. So one of the inspirations for Drafted was uh, what what are known today as employee referral programs, and also uh, what are known as headhunting agencies. So if you if you think about how the structure of a headhunting agency works, uh, normally it's uh, it's contingency hiring. So an agency will send you candidates, and if you hire any of those candidates, then you kind of owe the agency uh, a fee for hiring that candidate. And normally there's some provisions, you know, it's like they has, the candidate has to stay for a certain amount of time, and they have to meet a certain amount of requirements, et cetera, et cetera, uh, for the agency to claim that fee. And that normally uh, in the market today is maybe about 25 to 30% of that candidate's first year salary. Uh, so, you know, so if you, so if you hire an engineer and you're paying them $100,000, you're going to actually pay the agency twenty to thirty thousand dollars for that single hire. Uh, for executive hiring, it's even it even goes much higher than that. And so, you know, it's not unheard of for recruiting agencies to collect fees that are upwards of fifty thousand dollars per hire. Wow. Uh, and then, you know, the the kind of little you know the kind of little brother of this thing of this uh, of this type of hiring is uh, the employer referral program, where companies think. Well, you know, a lot of the good hires come through our network, and there are a lot of good hires uh, come through referrals from our employees. So maybe we should uh, maybe we should take a chunk of this change that we would normally pay to headhunters and pay it to our employees instead. And so that's kind of the inspiration for employer referral programs. And uh, you know, they they resemble uh, you know they all they resemble kind of customer referral programs in sales uh, quite a bit, where you know if you bring in your friend and your company hires them then uh, you get a small bonus from the company. Uh, although most employer referral bonuses normally range anywhere between you know, $1,000 to $10,000 mm -hmm. uh, per hire, depending on the company and the role and so on and so forth. So instead of going through like a headhunter, like you said, these companies, by going through Draft, it can actually save money, it seems like. Yeah, so, so, so the Draft app today allows companies to have an instant referral program that goes to their employees, their friends, their family, investors, advisors, and even headhunters. So our goal is to say, hey, good referrals can come from a lot of places. Uh, sometimes they're from professionals like headhunters. Sometimes they're from employees who are already working at your company and therefore really great matchmakers. And a lot of times they're from your community. You know, it might not be a referral directly from your employee, but it might be from your employee's sister. Or it might be from your investor's nephew, right? And these people are all also batting for, for your company. They know a lot about your company and they know a lot about their friends. So they're in a really, really good position to be matchmakers there. And, uh, and while most people don't refer because they want money, having an incentive program like that says that you value their referral, right? So it's not, uh, it, it's not meant as payment, but it's more meant as a sign of gratitude from the company to the community. And after all, uh, you know, Apple doesn't give away iPhones for free. And, you know, when you, you're, do, you know, you're doing your friend a favor, but you're doing a company a great service when you refer your friend there. So I think it's very, very fair for companies to actually be paying anyone in their community um, as a sign of their gratitude and for, as a reward. And that's kind of what Drafted enables today in the mobile app. Do you think that that also, going back to culture, do you think that that also helps with building the culture by you know, going through um, you know, people at that company referring people that they know that they think would do a good job there? I think so. I think inherently, uh, great companies are built with a lot of referrals, and uh, having an incentive program definitely sends a signal that hey, we really value referrals, and we understand that it's not trivial for you to be referring your your best friends uh, to the company. And you know, every time you make a referral, you're taking a little bit of a risk, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of unsaid. You're taking a small amount of social risk. You're taking a small amount of political risk within your company because, you know, if you refer someone and they don't work out, then that reflects poorly on you uh, from both sides. Right. Right. Even though you were out of the goodness of your heart trying to do the best thing for both parties. Mm -hmm. And so when it goes well, uh, it kind of makes sense that, you know, because you took that risk and it went well, uh, you would be rewarded for it. And I think that this is really great for culture because it's the company saying, hey, we want to encourage you to take you know, to take these risks and be a little bolder. Uh, and, you know, and we got your back if you do something that's in the best interest of the company and your friend. So let's say that I work at company A and I know that my company uses 
uh, drafted, right? And I know someone that I want to refer for a specific position. How does how do I do that? How does it work? So uh, normally companies will sign up on drafted, and drafted will import all of their existing jobs, and then companies set rewards per job, and they're kind of customizable. So you know, typically we might see, let's say we want to hire a marketing associate, and the reward for that is four thousand uh, dollars, and we want to hire a senior software engineer, and the reward for that is ten thousand dollars. So if you're at a company and you have a friend that wants to work uh, wants to work there, you can go to dra- you can go to the drafted website or the app. And you can look at, you can find the relevant job, let's say marketing associate, mm-hmm. and you simply forward it to your friend. And you can do that via email, via text, via Twitter, Facebook, pretty much whatever you want. Uh, and that's kind of one of the one of the things that we really focus on at Drafted is how to do that in a really fast way. Uh, you know, we think that referring your friend to a job should be as easy as sending a text message. And so today in the Drafted app, it actually is. You look, you can literally just say, text this to my friend, and it works. Uh, your friend would get a link, and the friend would all all your friend would have to say is like yes, I'm interested, or no, I'm not. Uh, if they say yes, they get put in touch directly with the hiring manager. So we also kind of skip the part uh, where you have to introduce someone, and then you know email BCCs and sue. Uh, you know sometimes stuff slips through the cracks because you know we're going to make sure that your friend is put directly in the company system, uh, make sure that no one's going to lose track of them, and then we're also going to keep you updated as the person in the middle about what's going on. And so if, if that person then eventually gets hired, right, then me and that person would split the bounty. Is that the way it works? That's right. Oh. So, uh, so uh, yeah, we, we initially we actually thought that, oh, you know, uh, well, the candidate's getting a new job, right? Uh, but we actually found uh, by talking to a lot of people that this actually happens behind the scenes anyway. So, you know, the number of friends that I have that say, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, let me refer you to this place. And, you know, by the way, we'll split the bounty, right? Yeah. Um, that happens in real life. And yeah. so we kind of wanted to mirror what's happening there. And the other thing is, uh, you know, we want to make it clear that we're trying to, you know, that everyone's trying to act in everyone's best interest for the most part, right? Where, uh, you know, you're not, you're not saying, you're not referring your friend just because you want the money. It's more like you're teaming up with your friend to make sure that you guys get to work on the same team and also get rewarded by the company for it. And if the person that I refer, you know, maybe they don't think that's the best fit for them, but they know someone else, they can then refer their friend as well. And then the three of us would split the bounty. Absolutely. So yeah, that's one of the really cool parts about drafted. Uh, Yeah. Thanks for the, thanks for bringing that up is that uh, you can actually pass along a particular job indefinitely. So it could pass, between three, five, ten, a hundred people even. Um, and whenever someone gets hired, everyone between the company and the new hire will actually get to split the reward. So even if you don't know anyone great, if someone sends you a job on drafted, you can always say, hey, uh, I'm not interested, but guess what? I have a friend who is, and you pass it on. Uh, and that way, you always have the opportunity to help your friend who's looking for who's looking for something, even if you don't want it. When you're building new features for Drafted, how important is the feedback from your customers? Uh, we crave, absolutely crave customer feedback. Uh, I probably spend, uh, I probably spend ten to twenty percent of my time only talking to customers, and uh, it, w- it used to be even more. In the beginning, we interviewed uh, at least a dozen hiring managers before we even decided to build anything, and uh, we try to do that with a lot of our new products as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we love doing house calls. We love going and visiting our customers. We love having them come and visit us. So I think, uh, yeah, I think in, especially in our business, uh, where our customer is primarily the hiring manager who's hiring at the company, uh, their feedback and building tools that they actually find valuable is incredibly, incredibly important for us. So I know that something that you released recently is called job grader, mm-hmm. right? So that helps employers see if their job descriptions stand out from other from other employers. Is that something that came through the feedback, or is that something that you you thought of in house? Uh, so that's a uh, I would say that's that's kind of a combo. So uh, you know even even though customer feedback is really important, uh, it's really important not to let customers drive your design and product process uh, and your and your design and product decisions. So you still have to make those decisions. And I think um, I think really good product teams are great at collecting customer feedback and turning that feedback into one or two very concrete, actionable decisions that the product team takes. Right. So if a customer says, "I want X," simply building X isn't enough. 
right? You have mm-hmm. to say, why is the customer saying that? Why do they want that? Um, and you find, you know, you have to figure out the problem the customer is trying to solve and then create a really good solution to solve that problem instead of, instead of simply building the solution that the customer proposes. Uh, that, I think that's the way that uh, you get to products that people actually really love. So with JobGrader, a lot of customers, uh, you know, we found that a lot of customers in the early days that used Drafted really, really didn't like writing job descriptions. And when they had to write job descriptions, they were always confused about how to do it. Because if you, th- I mean, if you think about it, uh, especially in the startup world and especially at middle-sized companies, you often have hiring managers who are first-time hiring managers or maybe second-time hiring managers. And writing great job descriptions isn't really a core part of their skill set because they've just never had to do it a lot. I mean, you know, they've never had to sit down and write a thousand job descriptions. So, you know, where do they have the time to get good at it? Mm-hmm. And so what they end up doing is they end up looking at templates or they end up uh, or they end up simply copying a job description for a similar position in another company uh, instead of trying to instead of trying to actually come up with something really original for that company. And you can't blame them because you know no one thought you know no one thinks oh yeah I'm gonna write the most killer job description and it's gonna be really creative and really entertaining. It's just not something that people think about. And uh, that was kind of one of the inspirations for job descriptions. And you know we interviewed some of our customers. And, you know, one of them was like, you know what I really hate? I hate writing job descriptions because I never know when it's good or bad, right? You know, I might list a bunch of requirements that I want, but I have no idea whether it's actually going to be appealing to the people that we want to hire, right? And there's no, and there's no real way for me to get that feedback because, uh, you know, because we're not structuring this like a Google Analytics funnel, right? We don't know that, oh, you know, it's like when we change these words, uh, people like our job description more and apply more. Right. So, you know, we thought maybe a good first step is to simply give people great feedback on the job descriptions that they're already writing. And that was one of the inspirations for JobGrader. Okay. So if someone is writing a job description, how can they, how can they tailor it more towards their, you know, the specific person that they're targeting and make it unique from others? Uh, So I think, well, I think there's, there's two, there's two parts to this. There's a couple of best practices that I think everyone should use, okay. and uh, in terms of uh, in, t- in terms of keeping it relatively concise, um, getting to the point. You know, a lot of the people who are reading your job descriptions um, are only going to be scanning them, and you know, just to make sure that they're in the right place. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people actually care a lot more about the company and less about the job. So sometimes the use case for a candidate is like they just want to make sure they're looking at the right job. Right. And so for those people, you want to make sure that you get to the point as fast as possible. There's other there's other candidates who are in kind of exploration mode where uh, they're just kind of looking around, trying to figure out what types of jobs this company has and, you know, whether they're cool or not. And so for those people, uh, having something that's unique to your company, I think, is actually really valuable and important. And it makes people stop. It gives them pause and really consider your company because it stands out. Right. I mean, you know, just like. Uh, you know, just like having a great marketing headline is important if you want to publish an article on BuzzFeed, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to think about job descriptions the same way. Like, what's going to get your reader's attention? Uh, and, you know, what is it about your company that's going to get your reader's attention? So I think, um, you know, I, th- I think you almost have to think about it uh, as an advertiser rather than as a requirements document, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so when you first decided to start building Drafted, why did you decide to focus it as an app? Uh, that's actually a great question. Uh, and part of that was based on feedback from early interviews. And part of it was based on some core beliefs that we had about the industry. Uh, one of the things about the HR industry is, you know, like I said before, is like no one thinks HR and thinks like, oh, man, that's so cool and sexy and fun. And uh, we kind of want to change that perception a little bit because we think that hiring is pretty much the most important thing. And uh, but it doesn't get a lot of attention um, from most of from most of the company because it doesn't seem fun and cool and sexy. It's because, you know, when people think hiring, they think stacks and stacks of resumes. They think really boring job descriptions. They think compliance documents. Right. Um, And, you know, we want to change that perception and say, hey, this is actually really fun. Um, It's a fun app. And, you know, we wanted to pass what we call the shitter test where. You should literally be able to post a job or apply to a job or refer someone for a job 
um, you know, right, right from your phone in, in a matter of minutes. You should be able to do it when you're going home on the T. Mm -hmm. You should be able to do it when you're stopped in traffic, although I don't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you should be able to do it, um, you know, you should be able to do it in, uh, in between meetings so that, so that it doesn't become this chore. It just, you know, you can just magically do it whenever you want to do it. And that's kind of one of the big inspirations for the app. The other big inspiration for the app was uh, that we think that introductions and referrals generally originate in person and you know it's uh you know it's a couple of people meeting at a cocktail party for the first time and one of them says hey you know uh you know i'm a software engineer and you know uh, i work on you know i work on xyz at google and you know but really uh i'm probably going to look to move in a couple of uh you know in a couple of weeks because i want to find better opportunities and the person they're talking to says oh man my friend just started a really great company let me introduce you uh, I think, you know, I think you're really going to like the research type stuff that they're doing over there, right? And so when this, when this type of interaction happens, it's kind of magical because the person in the middle had to think of both the company and they had to meet the right person. And if you lose that moment, you potentially lose that hire. Like that company potentially loses that hire if they lose that moment. And so you want to make sure that the referrer has an app in their hand right then so they can just swipe and say, awesome, I just referred you. Uh, so that was one of the main reasons is that you want something that's mobile because you want it to be in the moment and you want people to be do doing it in person. Be able to use it at any time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so when did you start building Drafted? Uh, so I started I started working on Drafted officially at the, uh, toward the end of 2014. Okay. So thinking back, is there anything that you would do differently if you were to build it again? Uh, that's a that's a great question because. Uh, that's actually what we're, that's actually what we're doing this year. So, uh, you know, in terms of in terms of not letting customers design your products, uh, you know, one of the one of the really positive feedbacks we got in the beginning about our app was, you know, people are like, man, it's like I've been wanting to post jobs and look at candidates on my phone forever, and there's no great experience to do that. I'm so happy that you guys are working on it. Like, please give me an app where I can just browse through my jobs and post jobs and look at and look at candidates and review their profiles. And then, you know, we launched the app, uh, we had our first, you know, 25 beta customers and, you know, literally the first day we got a call saying, uh, so I wasn't able to log into the website. How do I do that? And that was like a, you know, that was like a huge WTF moment for us because we're like, you, like, you're the one who asked us for an app and we, so we, we made you an app. We don't have a website and, you know, they're like, oh yeah, yeah. But I just want to look at it on my computer. Right. And so that's a great example of things that, you know, something that everyone wanted, mm -hmm. but then didn't actually want to use very much. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So this, so this year we're actually heavily focused on building, um, building some really amazing web functionality for employers. And we started with um, kind of the, the analytics dashboard. So you can see uh, where your candidates are coming from, who's referring who, uh, which channels are being more productive for you. And we're actually going to continue building on that. And um, this is a great timing because we're about to launch uh, a really, really huge feature uh, on the web for employers. Uh, we're completely re redesigning the app and we're going to bring every single part of the mobile functionality to the website. And also, in addition to that, we're going to give you uh, we're going to give you a magic tool that surfaces people in your network who are qualified for the jobs that you're posting in within three seconds of you posting the job. So how, how do you know, if you post a job, how does it know if somebody is qualified for it? Uh, does it like pull from LinkedIn and that's just... What yeah, so we, so we allow, we allow companies to connect uh, their, you know, kind of Google apps for business accounts. We let them connect their LinkedIn and we'll add, uh, we let them connect their phone contacts and we're going to add more and more ways for them to connect other parts of their networks. And the great part is that, you know, if there's, if there's five or 10 people in your company that go and connect their networks on Drafted, mm -hmm. we instantly can can be mining from a database of you know five to ten thousand people because of the way that people's second degree networks work. Uh, you know, it's um, you know generally as you go as you go farther and farther out, the number of people in your network increase exp increases exponentially, and so we only go a couple of degrees out right now. Um, but even that will give us access to thousands of people that are qualified for any of your given jobs. And so, you know, we use our, you know, quote unquote, secret sauce to figure out, uh, you know, who out of them you should be talking to. 
Uh, but one of the cool parts, piece of data that we have that other people don't have is who's referring who and how good those referrals are. So we can use that data to make better predictions um, about, uh, about who you should be talking to. But at the end of the day, we don't, you know, we want to make suggestions about what you should do. Uh, but we really believe that uh, the human element is really important in hiring because at the end of the day, you're going to be working with people and you have to fit with those people. And so our goal is still to connect the hiring manager and the candidate as fast as humanly possible. But uh, we try to leave the evaluation of that, you know, the evaluation and the actual interview and hiring process to the company and the candidate. So since you started building out the website of things, do you find that, you know, the app is mainly used by people referring people to jobs while the web is mainly used for like hiring managers seeing um, you know people that have applied for the position or is it mainly is it split between the two uh, so uh, another good question because uh, we've actually been seeing increased activity from people referring on the web now as well okay and so uh, you know I think I think the conclusion for us is that we ha- we just have to be on all the platforms. Uh, one of the really cool things in the app is uh, is actually a feature that's built for candidates, which is um, which is the ability to find a good referrer for you if you're interested in the particular company. So let's say tomorrow you you, you know you come to me and say, "Hey Vinayak, uh, I really want to work at Lola Travel. Uh, how can I get in?" Right? Uh, if you came to me and said that, I'd say, "Oh, I know some people there. Let me introduce you." And we try to recreate this interaction in the app. So now you can go to draft as a candidate and browse through the companies. Um, when you choose a company, you'll see all the connections that you have to that company. And the connections might be in the company or outside the company. It just means that you have some way. You like you have an intro, right? You have an in to that company. And then you can actually request that intro. And then the person in the middle will get a notification saying, hey, you know, Nick wants an intro. Is that cool? And all they have to do is say yes, right? Uh, so that's one of the very, very popular features that's on the app um, that a lot of candidates use. Okay. I read somewhere online where you said about running a startup, I try to leverage every part of me, everything that I ha- I think is a strength in whatever way I can. Can you talk more about the importance of that? Uh, playing to your strengths? Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, this is, this is something that uh, I realized recently because... I started doing ballroom dancing a few years ago, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I I still I still do it. I really enjoy it. And a couple of years in, uh, I want you know I started to get competitive about it, and uh, I I considered doing uh, you know doing real competitive ballroom dancing and having that be a big part of my life. And I actually decided against it because after I went to a few competitions, I realized that most of the people who are at the top of this this discipline um, have been doing it since age two. And they're all, uh, and they're all really, really good at it. And in order for me to be as good as they are, I would have to dedicate almost my entire life to it. And even then, I'd probably only be within eighty percent of where they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, to me, this wasn't a good use of my strengths because I could accomplish more things in other sectors uh, instead of doing ballroom dance. So I still continue it as a hobby, but I stopped doing it competitively. Okay. So what are what are some things um, as it relates to running? Your company that you've identified as your strengths and other things that you've identified as you know, best being left to other people. Uh, so, so one of the, one of the great things about running uh, a startup and uh, and being and being responsible for figuring out uh, figuring out all the different aspects of the business is that it really helps to be a generalist. So, uh, you know, since I started the company, I've done you know I've written code, I've done uh, I've done design, I've done sales, I've done marketing. And pretty much every other function that you might think uh, relates to the company. And I would say that now I'm like really proud to have a team where I'm not the best person at any of those anymore. Uh, and I think I think that's generally a good goal to have uh, mm-hmm. is to is to basically always have someone in the company that's better than you at any given discipline. Uh, and I think that uh, and I think that simply striving for that and doing a good job at building that team is my strength. And so that's what I'm going to keep trying to do. So what's something that you've learned about yourself since you started your own company? Uh, so uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning, I learned Swift, um, which is the, uh, the new iOS programming language. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I, learned, um, I learned some design skills. So I learned Sketch. Uh, I also learned how to make um, live app prototypes in Envision and in Keynote. 
Um, actually, the very first uh, financing round that we raised for Drafted was based purely on a design prototype using Sketch and Envision and Keynote that I made. All, that I that I made, and it was just me. And uh, I didn't have any of the skills uh, before before I had to do that. Uh, and then more recently, I've been reading a lot more about sales and marketing. And uh, I think uh, you know I've started writing more. Uh, and I think I'm getting. I, I think I'm slowly getting better and better at it. And I think I'm going to try and do some short form audio content and try to get better at that. Uh, and I'm also reading a lot of sales books. Um, and I'm trying to trying to become a better salesperson now. What do you find helps you the most when you're learning something new? You know, is there is there something you know? Is it like a certain environment that you're in, or is it just you know, a certain content for you works better? How do you how do you learn best? Uh, I would say people in books okay. is, the, is the two things. Uh, I think number one is surrounding yourself with people that know more about you in that area uh, really helps. Uh, just by hanging out with people who are really good at something, um, you you kind of end up kind of leeching away that goodness and kind of absorbing it over time. So I think that's like one of the best things that you can possibly do is just hang out with the people that are good at it. And it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to work with them even, Right. Um, just hang out with them and sooner or later you'll pick up something and you'll get better at it. Uh, and the other thing is books. So uh, every time I meet a new investor or an advisor or anyone new comes on the, uh, comes on the team or on board or, or uh, related to draft in any way, one of the questions I always ask them is what are the three favorite books and most influential ones that they've read? And then, uh, and then I'll try to go read all of those. Have you found that there are any any trends or a lot of books that come up often? Or? Yeah, there, yeah. There's actually there's actually a fair amount of overlap, which is uh, which is surprising. And uh, what yeah, else? so uh, I would say Blue Ocean Strategy comes up a lot. Okay. Um, and in, in in my recent in my recent reading, uh, Lean Customer Development comes up comes up a lot. Uh, and then uh, yeah, more recently, uh, a book called Influence has come up a lot by Robert Cialdini. Yeah. Yeah, I just finished reading that book. Yeah, yeah it's a it's, yeah, it's, it's a great book. It's like it's yeah, it's, it's I think it's it might be one of my favorite books now. Yeah. Uh what does the future look like for Drafted? I think that in the next 5 to 10 years we're going to see a trend shift in recruiting where uh recruiting basically becomes a marketing discipline. Uh I think historically and I, you know and, and I recently wrote a bunch of stuff about this too. I think historically, uh, recruiting has resembled more of an outbound advertising type of discipline where, you know, it's, it's basically, you know, you see newspaper classifieds for buying a chair and you also see newspaper classifieds for getting a job, right? And, uh, and that really hasn't changed a lot. And only now people are starting to kind of use more inbound marketing tactics for recruiting. Uh, you know, founders are writing blog posts, but how many of those founders know that because they wrote a blog post... Uh, you know, the person who read that blog post then went and applied to their company. They probably know if that person became a customer um, because there's a lot of good tools to do that, but they probably don't know that that person became an applicant because there's not a lot of good tools to do that. And I think that in the next, uh, I mean, I think very soon you're going to start to see a lot more tools that are focused on giving recruiters the same tools that marketers have uh, because of this. And I think that, uh, I think that overall, Drafted is going to be uh, one of those tools a marketer's dream is for customers to refer other customers and have organic growth and word of mouth. Um, and their even bigger dream is that soon, even people who aren't customers will start referring their friends. And that's going to be because of the product brand, right? Um, and that's kind of how marketers view their job is like they, they want to create this organic, thriving community of people um, that, you know, that magically bring them more customers all the time. And I think that uh, I think that the future recruiter's dream is the same, where you start with referrals and, you know, your first customers are your employees. And so you want your employees to refer their friends. And eventually you want people who aren't even employees of the company to refer their friends to your company because you have a great employer brand. And uh, I think, you know, I think our goal at Drafted is to kind of enable all of those different things. And, uh, and that, you know, and that's, and that's just for the companies. On the other hand, uh, one of the things that I find interesting about social and professional networks in general is that um, some of them are very focused and some of them are relatively unfocused. And uh, I would say Facebook and LinkedIn are kind of more general, uh, less focused networks that, you know, whose only goal is to have a central place and a platform for people to connect. Uh, and then you've seen, uh, you've seen a lot of different companies that have, that have tried to 
pull out more focused parts of those networks and do a really good job at them to serve very specific use cases. And I think drafted is going to be uh, drafted is going to be more like the second one too. So you know, if you want to you know, if you want to look at your wedding photos and uh, and your friend's dog, you're going to go to Facebook if you want to catch up with your friends. Uh, if you want to read, uh, you know, if you want to read educational content from influencers, or if you want to, you know, look up that one person whose name you can't remember, uh, you're probably going to go to LinkedIn. But when you actually define someone specific for something that you need, and you want that to come from a trusted introduction, you're going to go to Drafted. So you said before that you learned at an early age how to communicate in a way that engages empathy. Can you tell tell us more why that you think that's important? Uh I think is the best way to communicate because if you want to communicate with someone well, the first thing you need to do is you have to understand that person. And you can and, and it's really hard to do that without putting yourself in their shoes. And the same goes for vice versa, right? If you want someone to communicate well with you, right? If you don't understand what someone is saying to you, then you have to help them be in your shoes as well. And I think uh I mean, I think, you know, I think that's a very, very fundamental thing. And it applies to all types of communication, whether you're communicating with family, whether it's a significant other, whether it's coworkers, whether it's investors or whether it's business partners. How can people learn to be more empathetic in the way they communicate? Uh, I think that's beyond my area of immediate expertise, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but I think, uh, I think in a nutshell, I would say, uh, the the first step would be to be a better listener, and I mean I you know I don't think I certainly don't think I'm an expert on any of these things, uh, but that's a good place to start is just to listen. And you know a good rule of thumb is you only say something for every three thing every three things that someone else says. Okay. And you know it's like that's a good way to kind of mechanically force yourself to do it, and and also to measure if you are doing it. Uh, I think one of, uh, this was definitely true for me. Uh, I used to think that I was really good at listening, and then I tried this, and I found out that I really was a terrible listener, and it made me better. So how did you how did you change? Uh, well, I mean, just well, just keeping count helps you change, okay. right? So because because now because now you're just more aware. Uh, it's like if you can't you know if you can't measure it, then you're probably not going to be able to improve it. Yeah, it's I think it's good to also be more aware of you know being able. To, to realize if you're listening to other people or not, if you're, if you're just, mm -hmm. you know, focused on, on yourself. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, so what advice would you have or to give someone that wants to start an app based business? Uh, I would say two, I would say two things. Uh, the first one is that the only thing that matters to have a successful business is your team. And it doesn't matter what app you want to build. So make sure you have a, an amazing team and then, your amazing team is also going to fix all the problems with your ideas. They're going to fix all the problems with your vision. They're going to fix all the problems with your app. Uh, and and the best part is that if you have a great team, you're going to have a great time no matter what. So even if you build an app that doesn't work out or a business that doesn't work out, you're still going to have an amazing experience with amazing people. And at the end of the day, I mean, that's what life is about. It's about having a good experience. Uh, so now I want to go into our rapid fire questions uh, to close out. Not necessarily rapid fire answers, so feel sure. free to expand on things. Um, before we begin, how old are you right now? I'm 28. 28, okay. So what advice would you give to your 20-year-old self? And what were you doing at that time? Place yeah. time? <laughs> uh, so when I was 20, I was a senior at MIT. Okay. And yeah, my senior year at MIT was very relaxed because I finished most of my requirements by the end of my junior year. So actually, one of the things that I did during my senior year was I watched all of Star Trek twice, all of Star Trek TNG. It's a great show. I think it's one of the best shows ever made. Um, but I would say the advice that I'd give to my 20-year-old self is that discipline isn't bad. Can you expand on that more? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I mean, so, I, you know, I, I grew up in India and I went to uh, you know, elementary, middle and high school in India before I came to the United States. And uh, one of the big themes in, Indi in, in Indian education is discipline. Um, but in the Indian education system, uh, when they say discipline, they really mean obedience. And so, uh, come, anyone who comes through that system, uh, generally has, a, a, a slightly rebellious streak in them because they've been kind of forced to obey so much. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, probably I should have realized the difference between obedience and discipline, uh, a little bit earlier because discipline, uh, actually allows you to become better and faster and stronger. 
uh, compared to obedience. But because I had this kind of bad experience, um, you know, I I kind of t- flipped a switch in my mind, which said that like discipline is bad, and because you know because I equated discipline with obedience. I don't know if that made sense. Yes, it does. <laughs> Uh, what are your favorite apps to use besides Drafted? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I actually really like Snapchat, even though a lot of people think that the interface, I, I think the interface of Snapchat is polarizing, uh, but I, but I really like it because I think they constantly try new stuff and I really appreciate that. Mm. Uh, I also, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about the, about a lot of the new apps that are coming out. I, I told you I started using bumpers yep. and, um, thanks to Zach, one of the guys on my team for, for telling me to try it out. Uh, I think, uh, I think that's really cool. It's like a nicely done app. What's something about you that most people don't know? Uh, all right. I'm trying to, okay. Um, I guess I'm going to tell you something embarrassing now. <laughs> so, uh, in, so in, in high school, uh, we used to have uh, we we used to have music contests and com- and competitions, and one of the uh, one of the things that I did in high school was uh, I used to take Indian classical music lessons, and I also sang uh, I also sang American songs, and actually won a singing contest in high school uh, singing fr- singing a Backstreet Boys song in front of more than five hundred people. What song is it? Larger than life. Okay. Do you still sing today, or is, is that like a hobby? Uh, no, that is that is a that is a past life for me now. It's on the back burner. Uh, so, what other Boston startups excite you the most? Uh, I think one of the startups that I'm really excited about right now is uh, is Get Human. Um, you know, full disclosure, uh, I'm you know I help them out from time to time, and uh, I'm good friends with their founder. Uh, I think you know I don't know if you know what they do, but they're a consumer app that tries to take care of your day-to-day problems with service providers for you. So, you know, let's say you want to cancel Comcast, right? You can ask GetHuman to do it instead of waiting on hold for 45 minutes. And I really like them because one, it's a pain. It's a pain for me. I like one of the things that I really, really hate is calling Comcast. And I think that's true for most people in the world. And so I think that if they're able to solve that problem really well, uh, that's, I mean, that's one eliminating like a huge source of stress for like the entire world, which I think is yeah. in itself exciting. Uh, and also it has a potential to be one of the biggest mass consumer companies in Boston because it's a huge market. So it's, they help you with uh, like service providers and getting in, in contact with them or yeah. You, so you have someone at, at get human do it for you. Is that uh, how it works? Yeah. So, the, so there, so there's two ways. So they actually have, so they basically have cheat sheets. So, uh, you know, instead of oh, okay. instead of talking to a robot telephone for ten minutes, they'll be you know you can go to Get Human and they'll tell you you know just press five five six two one mm-hmm. to get to a person. Okay. Because their mission is literally to get more human in customer service, and so that's really nice. That's like a really valuable utility that I use all the time. Yeah. And then the second thing they offer is uh, they'll actually just take care of it for you, right? So you go to Get Human and you type in. Uh, I would like to uh, see if I can get a discount on my Verizon bill. And they're like, we're on it. And then they take care of it. They keep you updated. And then most of the time they end up saving you money, which is really cool. Do you have any favorite blogs or books? Uh, I don't read a lot of blogs, actually. Um, I normally, normally the way I consume blogs is, uh, is, through, is through my friends. Uh, so I don't, so I'm not an avid follower of particular blogs. I generally read one-off articles from good ones. Mm-hmm. Um, but books, I would say my all-time favorite book is Shantaram by, uh, by Sir Greg Roberts. How do you spell it? Uh, S-H-A-N-T-A-R-A-M. Okay. And, uh, it's a book about an Australian ex-con who escapes to India and spends, uh, and spends this like really odd and adventurous life in the Mumbai underworld mm-hmm. um, and along the way has a lot of a uh, lot of life lessons a lot of philosophy a lot of adventure a lot of action um, yeah I and mean, I think I think it's like the perfect book because it has everything it has romance drama action philosophy life learning uh, yeah it's um, it's really cool awesome. uh, so just a few more questions uh, just to close out where can people find out more about drafted uh, so you can find out more about Drafted by going to drafted.us. That's D-R-A-F-T-E-D dot U-S. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Drafted App, uh, or you can email me directly um, at V, the letter V, at drafted.us. Okay. Do you have any parting thoughts, advice, or suggestions for the audience? I would say one. nothing makes me happier than 
seeing someone doing what they love. So regardless of draft or anything else, uh, if you uh, you know if you want to if you want to do anything in Boston or anything in startups in Boston, uh, I'll help you out no matter what if you just email me. All right, thank you. We'll end on that. Vinay, thank you so much for uh, coming in today. I really enjoyed this. Uh, yeah, no problem. This was this was a lot of fun. Let's do it again sometime. If you enjoyed this episode, please go and subscribe to this podcast on iTunes and write a review. By subscribing, you'll get all of my new episodes automatically fresh onto your podcast app. So make sure to do so, and it really helps me out in the rankings and with acquiring users. Remember, all show notes can be found at startupbostonpodcast.com. Thank you for listening, and until next time, if you have any feedback, ideas for guests, or just want to say hi, you can reach me at nick at startupbostonpodcast.com. That's N-I-C at startupbostonpodcast.com. Cheers.